Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying, saying unto me, come hither, or come here. I will show unto thee, or I will show you, the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So here is the Bible using various figures of speech again to describe someone or something. And we're going to see as we continue exactly what the Bible is talking about when it refers to the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Always remember when the Bible uses symbology somewhere in the Holy Scripture there will be verses that explain exactly what is being referred to by those symbols. And so as we continue our study of this 17th chapter, we're going to see the angel is going to explain these things to John. In verse 3 says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now we learned of this beast in our study of the 13th chapter of Revelation. We learned that this beast is made up of the four beasts that Daniel spoke of in Daniel chapter 7. And so in that seventh chapter, Daniel was shown that those beasts were symbols of kingdoms that will exist at the time of the end. And in Revelation 13, we see all of those beasts united together. So he sees this woman, which is referred to as the great whore, sitting upon that scarlet colored beast. And we know it represents a government, a kingdom. It will be a one world system that exists at the time of the end, right before the return of Christ. Anyway, verse 4 says, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. So this woman was very wealthy, and she had a golden cup in her hand which was full of abomination. The word abominations means something detestable, something disgusting. And it says also in the filthiness of her fornication. Fornication is sex that God did not ordain, okay? Now we're speaking in a spiritual sense here because we're gonna see that the woman is, is a symbol of a wicked system or city. And verse five says, and upon her forehead was a name written, mystery, Babylon the great, the mother of harlots, harlots of prostitutes, and abominations of the earth. And so when John saw this woman and the name written on her head, he's like, who is she? And we begin to 
find out who she is in the sixth verse because he says, and I saw the woman was drunken with the blood of the saints. Saints are those that God have set aside for his own use. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, those are the people who accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior and were faithful unto death. And that's how they reached martyrdom. So this woman has been responsible and will continue to be responsible for the death of God's people. Verse 7 says, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? Or why, for what reason are you wondering who this woman is? He's about to tell him. He says, I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Verse 8, that was verse 7. He says in verse 8, The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. The word perdition means ruin or loss. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and is yet is. So he's referring to what we learned about in the 13th chapter of Revelation, the Antichrist, and how he will come out of that final one world system. And God is going to imprison Satan at right before Christ returns for 1,000 years, Revelation chapter 20 tells us, and he will not be allowed to influence any of the nations on earth during the thousand year reign of Christ until the very end where he will be released and allowed to test all those nations that were taught the truth for that thousand year reign of Christ. And after God uses Satan that final time, he will go into perdition. So that's how we know the beast is referring to Satan in his role as Antichrist here. And he says only those whose names are not written in the book of life are going to be deceived by him when he appears on the world stage. So, Anytime the Bible uses symbology, somewhere in the Holy Scripture, the Bible will tell you exactly what those symbols represent. So this woman that we are reading about is going to be that great city, Babylon the Great, which is going to have an influence over the nations in the last days. Now, we believe that this woman that uh, John is being shown describes the Roman Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has been responsible for more deaths than any other organization. They killed anybody who would not accept Roman Catholicism as their religion. And this went on for years and years. They killed Muslims and Jews. You know, that's the history of this organization. They're not doing it right now, as far as we know. But if you go back and, and, and study about the Crusades, that's what all those so-called holy wars were about, trying to force people to accept their version of the gospel. Verse 9, he says, and here's the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now you have some scholars want to translate this as the seven hills that the Vatican City sits on. But no, that's not what it's talking about because in the Bible, mountains are sometimes used symbolically to describe kingdoms. For example, in Jeremiah 51, verse 24 and 25, we read, And I will render unto Babylon, to all the inhabitants of Chaldea, all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. That's 24, verse 25. He says, Behold, I am against thee. I am against you, O destroying what mountain, saith the Lord, which destroys all the earth, and I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks, and I will make thee a burnt mountain. So it's talking about seven kingdoms that came and went in the history of the world. So that's what he means when he says the seven heads are seven mountains. Verse 10, and there are seven kings. This is another way you know he's talking about kingdoms. Five are fallen. At the time of this writing, the very first one mentioned in the Bible, Egypt had come and gone. 
and then the second was Assyria, the third was Babylon, the fourth was Medo-Persia, or the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians, all these are mentioned in scripture, the fifth was Greece. So he's talking about those five world powers had come and gone at the time of the writing. He says, one is, at the time of this writing, Rome was in power, and the other does not yet come. That one will be called the New World Order, and we're very close to seeing it come into existence. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Verse 11, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. That's the Antichrist. And is of the seven and goeth into perdition, which means destruction. So out of the new world order will come the Antichrist. And when he manifests himself as Jesus, he's going to turn on the, the great whore, which we believe is the Roman Catholic Church. So he's going to come out of that institution, and once he establishes himself, he's going to turn on them and destroy them and demand worship exclusively for himself. He says in verse 12, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast, which is the Antichrist. 13. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. He says in verse 14, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So when Satan turns on the Roman Catholic Church and this one world system, it's going to be ten kings in it that are going to remain with him. Everybody else is going to lose their power and they're going to have to come under his sway or be, or be destroyed. Revelation 17, 15. And he said unto me, listen. The waters which thou sawest, the waters which you saw, where the whore sitteth, where the whore was sitting, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So the waters represent all the nations that the Roman Catholic Church has influence over. And they have a membership of 1.29 billion. Wow. What a lot of people on their way to hell. Woo! Uh, he says in verse 16, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, which represented ten kings, these shall hate the whore. The whore represents the Roman Catholic Church. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Why? 17. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast, which is the Antichrist, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So God is always in charge of everything. Satan can't do nothing without God's permission. Remember that. Final verse says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, you see that? Which reigneth over the kings of the earth. And I'm here to tell you that this Bible scholar and many Bible scholars believe and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the great city that's being referred to is the Vatican City in Rome. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account. And then you can also download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number which is 630-441-4563. And then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. 
So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, send it to BartonAaronPorter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry and I need your support saints so please do that and last but not least it just came to my mind if you really were blessed by a bible study video take the time to put something in the comment section it encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain and God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. So take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, in closing, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. And I just recently purchased the domain name. It's godware.store. So please go to godware.store, check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go, and you're also blessing this ministry as well. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.